get going. So you'll start seeing everybody jump in. Guys, as you're jumping in, please let us know what city and state you're from and what country. I know we've got an audience from all over the world here. And as it starts playing, uh, what you're going to see is it may slow down the speed and the streaming may be a little bit choppy, but that's Zoom. And it'll fix, just give it about five minutes and it'll start evening out. Uh, Eric and I are co-hosting this. I'm from Westlake Village, California, not too far from everybody else on here, except Eric, you're from Colorado, buddy, and you run yes, sir. Breakthrough Broker. So tell us a little bit yep. about yourself while we're launching here. So hopefully we have a lot of Breakthrough Brokers on here today. I'm uh, an ex-broker owner and uh, co-founder of Breakthrough Broker. To uh, everyone on the call today from our group, super excited to be co-hosting this with Tristan from Lab Code Agents. So this is a joint Breakthrough Broker Lab Coats uh, group today. Uh, we're excited to have, we're expecting 3,000 or more on the call. So um, thank you to all the living legends on this call today, most of which, all of which I met for the first time. So it's really good for me to meet you guys. And uh, Tristan, thank you. Well, we're excited to get here. So let's just get right into it and introduce everybody super quick. Uh, I'm going to leave the short intros to you guys. So uh, I'm going to start on my right on the top on my screen, and that's Chris Cortazzo out of Malibu. Chris, can you give us a short bio on who you are and where to find you? Sure. Uh, the best place to find me is on Instagram, Chris Cortazzo, and it's C-O-R-T-A-Z-Z-O. And I've been in the business for 25 years. I specialize in Malibu, and um, I love my job. It's so much fun. I just switched companies from Cobalt Banker now to Compass. And um, perfect timing for me, and I'm very excited to share some of the things with you today. I love it. Thanks, Chris. And then let's go now diagonal. Peter. Peter Hernandez, also out of Malibu. You guys are neighbors, probably. Literally two streets over. Got it. Could probably hit a driver and hit his house. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm Peter Hernandez. Um, I'm going to be a serial realtor in this group, 50 years in the business. I'm president of the Western Region for Deco Solomon. Um, you can find me at PH Hernandez on Instagram. Follow me, PH Hernandez <clears throat> on Instagram. And, uh, you know, I, um, just, I just love this business. I think it's just uh, something that, like, you know, once you're in, you never get out. Chris and I have talked about that many times. You know, you get locked into this thing, and there's just no getting out, Mauricio. You guys, you're in. So uh, enjoy the ride. <laughs> very true, very true. And, and I've worked with Peter for, for a little bit while I was with Douglas Elliman, and Peter is a, an amazing, an amazing leader. So thanks for being on as well, Peter. Uh, Paul, we've got Paul Morris here on my left to the screen. He's out of our area as well, right? So Paul, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Um, uh, together with my group, we're, we're the second largest Keller Williams franchisee. So we have 3,000 realtors, uh, did 10,000 transactions last year. Um, <laughs> And also I'm the regional director for uh, Central and Southern California, which encompasses 36 offices and, uh, and close to 10,000 realtors. Um, also, you know, when we look at what's going on now, I think it's, it's also a lot of guys on this panel to invest in real estate. And I do that as well. I wrote a book called uh, Wealth Can't Wait uh, about investing and, and, uh, and how to use the, the, the great money that we can make in real estate sales uh, to profit in real estate investment. Uh, you can find me at, at Paul Mark Morris, M-A-R-K, uh, Morris, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, live with Tristan all the time. Yeah, we're always together. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you all. And I currently work with Paul for the Keller Williams region, so he's a, an amazing leader. Mauricio uh, so Mauricio, the first time I ever heard of Mauricio, because he's in my backyard too, was I'm like, he's Latino. I'm like, ¿Qué? no, no way. Hablas Espanol? And I'm like, no way, dude. So that was super cool. I didn't know that. Mauricio, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Thank you. Nice to be here with all of you guys. It's a pleasure. I know you all pretty darn well now. And um, let's see, I am a Latino. I'm from Mexico City. And I uh, was a CEO. I am the CEO and founder of the agency. I can be found. Uh, we can be found on uh, Instagram at the, uh, the agency RE. Uh, my name is Mauricio Umansky, and I've been selling real estate now for 25 years, plus or minus. Uh, Chris, I think, I guess you and I started it at the same time. And uh, I can be found on Instagram at uh, MUmansky18. 
And I look forward to speaking with everybody and having a great call. Let's have some fun here. I love it. Well, let's get right into it, guys. We've got uh, almost maxed out at 3,000 people on the webinar portion of this. And remember, this is being recorded, and we're going to blast it out to over 500,000 agents. And I have people telling us where they're from on the chat box. Uh, they're from all over the world. France, Spain, Germany, Portugal, South America, United States, Canada, Mexico. Uh, let's get right into it. Eric, you want to hit it off with some questions here, man? Yeah, I'd like to start. Actually, real quick, tell everyone on our end who you are, Tristan. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, I'm also visiting on the Breakthrough Worker site. So uh, I'm a real estate agent out of Ventura County, and I, I run Lab Code Agents. Lab Code Agents is the largest community of real estate agents online. And I also consult with companies like Facebook, uh, Realtor.com, and they go to me to find out what's working in real estate on the technology level. And so that's a little bit about me, Eric. And for Perfect. those of you who don't know you, Eric, tell us about you. Well, I started, I started uh, as a police officer. So I was a police detective uh, for seven years. Then I uh, went back to the street to train rookies and uh, fell in love with real estate as a hobby. As soon as I doubled my cop salary, I went into uh, uh, quit cop work, quit chasing bad guys, and went into real estate where you only figuratively get bit. And um, we were, uh, the rest is kind of history for us. Breakthrough Brokers, the most used interactive online resource in North America with uh, just over 425,000 realtors using it. Uh, today, my goal for bringing you guys on today and working with Tristan on this is I wanted to get the, the, the real estate agents who are, who are uncertain, who are have anxiety and a little bit of fear during this crazy time. I would, I wanted to hear from some of the best in the world at what you're doing. What, what, if you were, if you were in the trenches, what, what are some things you would do today to um, get through this? And so right now, the first question we're going to ask is um, how have you been adapting your business currently to um, for this specific situation today and, and I'm a real big believer, and I'm sure you guys are, the actions we take today are the success we see tomorrow. So, you know, let's start with Peter. What, what are you doing for your business? How are you adapting in the last month and a half um, so that you can succeed in the, in the rest of 2020? I think, I think the most important thing right now is not talking. And, um, you know, we've been doing, you know, a couple of Zoom calls every day with our agents. Uh, we have a role play in the morning at 8.30, and then we have a 9 o'clock uh, where we interview people or skill set or go over the latest brokerage contracts. So we're doing a lot of, of, of community building, culture building, a lot of uh, training. You know, we're inspiring and motivating and trying to keep everybody's head in the game and involved. I mean, the worst thing you can do right now is isolate, in my opinion. And the other thing is, um, for me personally, is that, you know, I'm making sure that I developed a new routine for the new circumstance, right? So, you know, what I used to do is I would get up, do my morning uh, meditation, prayer, emails, and I'd be at the gym by six or eight in my car, you know, heading to whatever office, whatever. You know, being at home full time has changed all that, right? So now we have to adapt in, in different ways. So now my workouts in the afternoon instead of the morning, you know, but I have a very, very strict schedule and I have boxes that I have to check off every day to make sure that I'm getting through the day. Uh, some of that including, you know, making calls, doing different things, the warm reach outs. Um, and then, and then I, and then I like, you know, make sure that I'm flexible too, because, you know, now that I'm in the house with my wife, with my daughter, with the dogs, things are like happening around me that I can't control. Mm -hmm. And I've got to adapt and adjust. So the situation is not perfect, right? In that sense, like we used to have our little controlled environments. So now it's, 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 there's a lot of adaptation. For agents, you know, it's a lot, of the, a lot of the things that they could do, they can't do. You can't door knock anymore. You can't network. And, in, in, you know, like we had happy hour people. We had people networking at the gym. We had people, you know, doing things that they can't do anymore right now. So I think the two big things for agents is number one is you got to pick up the phone again and reach out mm -hmm. in the calls and warm calls. You don't have to bring up real estate. In fact, don't. That's really a bad idea to lead with that conversation, but check in with everybody and see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, and I think this is part of what we're all doing here right now is you got to have a really strong social media game right now. Um, mm -hmm. I think that so many people are online and so many people are on their phones and computers and they're not only, they're not only looking at social media, but I, we've, we've, we've noticed that, um, on all of our websites, properties, Douglas Solomon, I checked with Knight Frank in, uh, in London. You know, all of, all mm -hmm. of inquiries and, and, and people are searching online now more than ever. The, 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 
everyone's looking at real estate, they're thinking about real estate. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, we're sitting in our homes full time now. You know, I used to just sleep in my house. You know, I'm finally like learning about my house. Living, yeah. I know it, you know what I mean? Like I'm going from room to room and I'm hanging out, I'm going out to the yard and I'm doing this and doing that and I'm, what I like, what I don't like. I mean, so it's a really interesting process and I don't think I'm alone in this. And no, I'm doing webinars in the closet to get away yeah. from the dogs and the kids. And <laughs> So I think that's kind of like the overview of the thing. I mean, you know, it's, Perfect. it's, it's so much between the ears and, and we all, I, I can tell you that that Mauricio and Chris and Paul are all experts at controlling their thoughts and keeping themselves right. from getting down and getting negative. And right. so mindset. So, yeah. Chris, thank you, Peter. That was great. Chris. Well, you know, it's interesting because we got bashed last year with the fires. I lost one of my properties and my other ones were damaged. So we are just, just recovering from that. But as Peter is saying, it's all in your frame of mind and how we want to perceive this. In 2009, um, it was disaster and I became the number one agent out of 91,000 agents within my uh, previous company. It's just a mindset. Um, we're really relying on Zoom. We do Zoom calls throughout the day with my office. Um, I have, you know, 20 in staff and we are mobilizing um, very precisely and um, it's all in the attitude. Um, luckily, um, with Compass, uh, they're so tech savvy that um, I'm really utilizing that aspect of it. And visual contact is really important these days. Um, we just got to work smarter and harder, and that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Thank you. Paul. Yes. So um, one of the things I think to note is that, you know, let's have – I'm, I'm definitely in the mindset of winning and what we can create right now. Let's also have a reality check. And that is that these are historic times. Okay. This, this will be a nine 11 or great recession type of event. Um, but like, like Chris said, coming out of the great recession, one of the things that our business did was emerge from it to be stronger than ever. So there's a mindset piece to it. There's also an action piece to it. Right. Um, and one of the things to look at is, is that these are great talking points. You know, I, I would say educate yourself on what's going on right now so you can be a resource to your clients for sure. Um, so how are the current times the same? How are they different? And one thing that's a, that's a big difference is that real estate is not the leading edge into this financial, uh, this really health crisis to start with, which no doubt is having massive financial impact. And, and nine out of the last 10 recessions were, were led by a downturn in the housing market. This one's very different. So uh, interest rates are an all-time low. I, I pulled out a, a graph, which I'll send to you, Tristan, so that uh, you can upload it to the group. But just showing where we've been over the last 25 years in real estate uh, in, in mortgage rates, and now really an historic time for that. Also, right before this, the housing market was still healthy. So it could very well be seen where the, real, where the stock market took a dump first is that real estate could be a safe haven for investors and for people to park their money. Um, and, and in terms of the, that's information piece, but in terms of activity, just doing things that other people will not do, okay? So I'm in Santa Monica. I'm friends with the number one realtor, the number two realtor in Santa Monica. How do you break into that if you're number 10, 11, 12? Very difficult to do when times are, when things are rolling strong, okay? Right now, if I was the number 10 or number 11 market share realtor in Santa Monica, I would make sure that I'm outpacing number one and number two in terms of social media, like you guys already said, and then also in terms of, of, of contact. One of the things I've been doing, I just call it an I care message. Again, very consistent with what people were saying, get in touch. You don't have to say, hey, are you looking to buy or sell or refer me? But uh, the way I've been doing it, and I've done so many, I sort of have a pattern that works. And one of them is a very, uh, is a very personalized message. So it'll be like, hey, Tristan, you know, hope you're doing well. Just want to check in with you and your family. Let me know if there's anything that I can do. And this too shall pass. So some sort of optimism at it. And, and what I've found is I get a huge amount of return from that. Okay. So it's not this cut and paste text message that, oh, and here's some resources for you. Mm -hmm. Tristan or the recipient responds back and says, 
oh, hey, Paul, I've been thinking about you, okay? One of the things that happens, and I just noticed this, is when I look at my cell phone, the incoming messages are only from close family and really, you know, very close business relationships. And that's not a bad thing. That's what people should be doing, and it's what they are doing. They're hunkering down. But when I send these outgoing messages, uh, I get a ton of responses. So you can be the one, uh, and that's what I would recommend to the realtors that, that, are, that are out there that aren't number one in their, in their particular area, how they, can get, uh, how they can get and grow market share right now. Understand your neighborhood, put out. Uh, so I, I do that, I do the first message, then I get the message back. Trista says, hey, Paul, you know, while thinking about you, and then I have a cut and paste, which I change every morning. I go on and I pick great news sources or information that I think is good for buyers and sellers. And then I, and then I send that back to them as a resource. So now I'm really having a dialogue. And I, I would just say in the end, you know, that, uh, that th this panel, and I know, I know some of you really well, you know, Peter is a great example. Uh, Tristan, you guys, you guys are, have always been the light, okay, for real estate. So you are, you are an invaluable resource to your clients. That's why your clients go to you. And when times are great and it's bright out and sunny outside, the light, it, you are the light, but it's less obvious, okay? And it's less needed. Right now when times are dark, that lightness gets magnified and it's our opportunity uh, to do that. So I'm, I'm working with my, my, uh, my realtors and anybody else who will listen because I know that we as an industry can emerge from this and really change, change how we're perceived and also get, gain market share in your area. I love that. I think spheres of influence are looking for leadership and for Absolutely. the realtor to step up and be a leader in that sphere is exactly what you're talking about. I love that. Mauricio. Well, I think that uh, in any circumstance, there's extraordinary opportunities. And uh, this is one of those things where you have to look at, uh, at what, what uh, opportunities are created. And in this particular case, what we have is uh, uh, a tremendous opportunities to stand out and to become extraordinary. But in order to become extraordinary, you have to do extraordinary things. It doesn't happen by accident. Okay. And uh, uh, right now is the opportunity. I wear two hats. I wear the hat as a realtor and I also wear the hat as a CEO and, of the agency. And so I, uh, I often switch them. You know, today I've got a blue one and a, and a black one. Um, <laughs> so, you know, right now I'm going to, you know, take the, uh, the, the CEO hat for one second. And uh, as the agency, I think what we need to do for our realtors and for our real estate agents uh, right now in order to be great is that we have to provide them with a lot of different content. We have to be in touch with them. We have to be uh, a, a source of information, also a psychologist, a source of uh, uh, as a consultant and as an advisor to all of them, because everybody is dealing with extraordinary events and really doesn't know how to necessarily handle things, right? Uh, can I do a showing? Am I, am I allowed to do a showing? Am I not allowed to do a showing? Uh, how do I stay in touch with my clientele? What do I talk? What are my Ford calls? What, uh, you know, what are all those different things that we need to be doing? And right now is an opportunity for agents to do that. So one of the things that uh, as the company that we're doing is that we're holding our agents accountable. We're checking in. We're constantly checking in so that we become a source to make sure that they do extraordinary things and that they actually stand out uh, above, you know, everybody else and, and, and do all the same things that you guys are all talking about, Chris and Peter and Paul and, and Tristan and all of you guys that you're talking about. So I won't repeat, you know, all of that stuff, but we're definitely part of that. And we definitely believe in that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm most proud of the agency right now is that we've created a 100% uh, participation CRM system, which is really a full ERP system, which allows us all to be sharing information, talking, uh, you know, tr uh, everybody involved, including all of our franchisees. Uh, we now have 37 offices in multiple countries, Canada, Mexico, U.S., and the Caribbean. Uh, and uh, everybody's involved. Everybody's in it. We don't treat our franchisees different than we treat our own offices. It's actually one. So that's part of our expansion plan right now. Mauricio, we're looking can you to it. can you repeat the CRM that you guys have? Is it is that like a, a proprietary thing? Because I didn't hear it about is that proprietary. Before. It's our own. We've started. The, we uh, we 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 uh, used all of the ones that are out there and that existed. You know, contactually and all, all of them. Uh, at the beginning, and none of them worked for us. And uh, so about uh, six years ago, seven years ago, we started creating our own. It's on a Salesforce platform, uh, but it's ours. It's a proprietary system that uh, 
just takes you through everything from A to Z on, on, on all aspects of the uh, real estate, from drip campaigns to uh, transaction coordinating to uh, uh, off-market properties, you know, within yourselves, which is a whole other conversation that, you know, we, we've been adapting because of that situation. And uh, yeah, so then, you know, as a real estate agent, and I'll be quick so that we can get this thing going. As a real estate agent, I do all of the things that we're talking about, right? Uh, and so I have that unique thing where I am checking with my clients. I actually sold two properties for the first time in my life off of um, virtual tours. I've never done that 25 years. I've never actually succeeded to <laughs> sell them, um, which is extraordinary and you know amazing. And you know, let's see what happens there uh, in the high end. And uh, yeah, just checking in constantly uh, being a source of, uh, to, to a, a psychologist and a source and just somebody that cares, not talking about real estate, but allowing the conversation of real estate to come into play, uh, setting up my goals for the remaining of the year, uh, and, and really just, you know, looking at my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, advertising, my marketing plan, all my listings, uh, talking to all my sales, uh, to all my, uh, clients about, uh, perhaps extending, uh, the listing, you know, now rather than when it actually comes into uh, 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 when it actually is about to expire, uh, because we are in a two, three month hiatus. So, you know, why not have those conversations now while everybody's happy? So, I, I you know, to all you agents, I definitely recommend you start uh, having that conversation. I like that. Two questions for you, just to piggyback. Um, do you feel in listening to your responses at the broker level with that hat on, do you feel there's a coming together of the brokerage, meaning when things were fast and furious and everyone was doing well, it feels like the brokerages were a little scattered and now everyone's kind of coming together and looking towards each other. Do you feel that or no? I hope so. And I've never been, I've never in my life for 25 years called a, uh, a fellow real estate agent, a competitor. That's just never come out of my, uh, my, my vocabulary. I've always called them colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, collaborators, uh, whether I was a real estate agent or whether I'm an owner of a real estate firm, I do not believe in, 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 you know, that type of competition. It's gotten kind of ugly, uh, right. particularly over the last, you know, five years, four years, it's just gotten really ugly. And it's not something that I enjoy as part of our business. I used to enjoy our business a lot more when we were all uh, collaborators and, and, and together and, and reaching for one goal and one tie lips all boats and all of that fun stuff. I am still like that. Um, you know, we've never really been a recruiting firm. Uh, we've had to change that a little bit, but I still would not consider us a recruiting firm. And, uh, you know, we believe that everybody that wants to be at the agency and work at the agency, uh, you know, wants to be there. It's not, has never been paid to be there, has never been uh, recruited to be there or a better split or a better deal or anything like that. And if it doesn't suit you and it's not part of your flavor, you know, it's fine. Go somewhere else. It's not that big of a deal. But as brokerage, we all need to come together and we all need to do extraordinary things as one big thing because NAR needs it. The real estate industry needs it. The local MLSs need it, and we all need to come together. Yep, I love and that. Eric, I, uh, you know, Eric, at the end of the day, when you think about it, you know our clients come and go, but we're always here together as, as, of as course. And colleagues. And so our relationships between each other are more important than anything because we're going to work together, you know, for the years to come. Yeah, I love. I always that. looked at I always looked at real estate agents and other companies as my client. Mm -hmm. as well as my client. I always say we have two clients, you know, the agents and the client. Of course. In my mind, the relationship is so key and critical. I well, love I, that. Part of the key to my success is always getting along with the real estate community. I'm very fair. I don't put my ego at all when it comes to showing properties or negotiating. And it's really important to have the backing of your fellow agents because you want them to show your properties. You want to be fair and be fun to deal with or else you're just boycotted they'll you'll be the last one to be shown and you can't afford that in this competitive market so i'm going to attest to that because we've worked with chris part of my team has luis robledo the guy with the british accent chris oh, yeah. uh, but he's worked with you in the past <laughs> he says you're one of the nicest guys anyone can work with and it's beautiful that you not only tell that to people but you actually show that well, I 100% believe, and that's one of the keys to my success, is having that close relationship with all the real estate agents. It's really important. And uh, one of my- I attest to that. Chris is one of those guys, for sure. Well, um, 
one of Mauricio's partners, uh, Santiago, and I are teaming up on trying to help a client out. Instead of competing with the client, we're joining forces. And it's just what we have to do. You've got to establish friendships and alliances um, to further your business. And that's really important for all of us to remember. I love that. I agree. Tristan, you're up. Next question. All right, guys. Well, here, here's where we get into the meat and potatoes. I'm going to start reverse and then go to Mauricio this time first, okay? Uh, Mauricio, what do you suggest to agents that are looking to actually create business for themselves now to be doing right now? Like something that's actionable for them because that's what they're looking. They're desperate for things to, uh, for them to be doing that work. This is actually a super simple question. Uh, and, it, uh, and it's a very, to me, there's really only one answer. Uh, in order to sell, you need to touch people. Um, and you need to make uh, touch a lot of people, whether that is through Instagram, Facebook, digital, or personal. The best and most efficient way is always personal touch. That's the closest, that's the best way. So at the end of the day, you have to pick up the phone and you have to make phone calls. I think one of the biggest mistakes that young agents make and the new um, younger people uh, generation makes is that when I say to them, Hey, pick up the phone and call somebody. They, and I, they say they did, they actually didn't call anybody. They actually just texted somebody. Texting is not a call. Okay. You have to pick so up the phone and touch people and call people, not the, uh, you know, not a text. The for some reason, the young generation just thinks that that is the call. <laughs> so to me, it's really about planning that, you know, you need to set up, uh, you know, we all talk about drip campaigns and, uh, uh, your CRM and putting that to work. Well, put it to work, but put it to work against your sphere of influence. Get to work. You have more time in the world now to start making calls, touching people, um, and you really, you know, need to go touch people. That's the end of the day. That's what sales is all about. When you sit in open house, you should be present. Right now, you can't, but when you sit in open house, you should not be upset that you're sitting in open house. You should wake up Sunday morning and be like, woohoo! I get to sit in open house today. <laughs> go and crush it and be there and be present and do all of that stuff. So that's what you need to do today. You need to set your mindset. You need to be prepared and you need to be present. You need to go make the phone calls and you need to go touch people. End yeah. of story. Hey. That's, that's exactly it, guys. And look, when it comes to, well, I'll, I'll shift over to you, Paul. I just wanted to add something to Mauricio. And that was when he's saying touch people, he's also meaning in, in different ways, like Paul's eye care okay. messages, right? So, and also online traffic is up dramatically. So, you know, it, could, it, it doesn't just have to be one way. He means touch in every way possible. Find what your strength is and just go all out, right? So like right. doing open houses on, on Facebook through events or premiere, dude, that's like insane, right? Mm -hmm. So Instagram Paul, live. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I wanted to, Hey, I wanted to jump in after Mauricio just because he hit it. Uh, he hit it so direct and correctly. And just to add to that, if you take, take what Mauricio said, and one of the things that I find is that uh, having difficulty with the circumstances of being at home is setting up, uh, setting up an accountability system, uh, which is what I did for, for our office managers and we're making it available to our agents as well, is just pick a number of how many eye care messages we're gonna send. So I picked 30, right? And so for a realtor, it would be 30 outgoing messages to your sphere of influence. You know, look at, look at how big your sphere is. You can divide it by whatever number and how many you wanna do. And just by simply, uh, I, I wanna make sure that, that the people watching this walk away with something that is highly usable. So take what, take what Mauricio already said, but develop a schedule where you hit a certain number a day and get a, get an accountability group, even if it's a couple of friends. And you know, every day at noon, or like Peter said, where he's doing he's doing Zoom calls in the morning, then later in the afternoon, check back in and go, okay, well, I did, I oh, I took the day off today. That's okay. Just report your numbers. So we've we've had a, a good success with our managers, uh, just keeping the awareness up front with that. Really quick, Paul, what what's the eye care message so people understand what it is because. The first time I heard it was from you. What would you text people on a so, video? All right. So I, I already did the script of it as I use it uh, at the beginning of the, of the webinar, but I'll hit it really quickly again. And it's just, it's very basic, but personal. So, so it would be like, Hey, Peter, uh, wow. What, what are we doing? What are we all doing now that the girls are out of school? Because Peter and I, our daughters go to the same school. 
And, and, uh, and it would be something personal like that. I hope you and your family are doing well. Let me know if there's anything I can do. This too shall pass. That's my script for the outgoing. So personal uh, offering, offering a, a helping hand, checking in, and some sort of, at the end, tie-in, uh, optimistic, optimistic message. I wait for them to respond, and I find that I get more than a 90% response from that, and then I shoot them a cut and paste of the resources that I've collected for the day. And one of the things in the chat box that I saw, and I try to put it in there, a couple of resources, I'll get my resources over to Tristan, and he'll, he'll post them so you all can, can see where they are. You know, I, I've been saying, oh, hey, uh, you know, mortgage rates have been an historic low, or, or an historic low. Well, if you know that what year and what the percentages were at that particular time, it, it's one little pivot that makes you the expert in the, in the area. So 1981, it was 18.6%. That was the high point, you know, and then it was 2000, <clears throat> 2000 <clears throat> November 2012 was the low point at 3.3%. So now I suddenly sound like an expert, right? I've thrown in two actual data points that help that along. And the more that people see you, uh, the more that people see you as the expert, and I'll go back to my two friends, not with my company, number one realtor uh, in Santa Monica, and the last downturn, I bought my house the day before the market crash, right? Okay, I know a lot about real estate, and that can still happen. And I was going to do a major, uh, major remodel, right? And I got nervous. So I would ask, who would I ask? I'm a real estate professional. I asked the guy who knows in Santa Monica. So, you know, like, wow, should I be nervous? And his answer, which is what I would give somebody else if they were asked is, well, you know, you're going to live there, you'll be fine, because over time, we'll come straight through this. Um, but one of the other things, too, is people still need to buy and sell. So get a hold of the resources that enable you to do that now. Um, we're using, you know, we're using Matterport, we're using some other, other uh, things that are available to all realtors um, to, to make sure that we can do some virtual, uh, virtual showings. Mauricio mentioned he sold even a high-end house, um, you know, in this, in this market. One, as soon as you open escrow, it then by law becomes an essential uh, it be, the activities to close the escrow become essential business. So these are all things that I'm communicating to people. Um, if you're going to hold on to your home for the next five or six years, I believe you're going to do fine, just like we did before. We're going to come out of this and be even better. If you were planning to sell, okay, so I have a second house in Palm Springs. I was staging it right before this happened. I have a choice right now to hold on for five years, in which case I believe it will be all back to normal and all good, or I can sell right now because historically we are at the front end of some sort of something that's happening negative, right? If the houses that are well-priced right now will still sell, that's a communication to talk to your uh, sellers. And if they're like, oh, well, well, hey, three weeks ago, I could have had, you know, 10% higher price. You know what? Do you want to? That's great. I have no, the, the advice that I would give to my family members are this. If you're going to hold for five years, go ahead and hold. If you're going to sell, I would sell it right now. So again, scripts and just being knowledgeable yeah. about what's going on. Here's a really interesting statistic. Uh, the S&P last week was up 20% over the last month. It was the biggest run since 1933. I used that on a $10 million deal to give confidence to the buyer to stay in the deal. I had buyer and seller at $10 million. And um, that just like important statistics, as you were saying, is very important. And Marita, you were saying being very um, close contact with your clients, I'm encouraging all my clients to stay on the market because everyone's staying at home and people are looking at real estate constantly. My, all my um, clicks on all my listings are really active. And once this uh, releases, um, everyone's going to be, you know, running to Malibu and, but keep your listings on the market for sure. Uh, Chris, so if somebody's saying, uh, and then I'll go to you, Peter. I just had a question for Chris here. Uh, Chris, if somebody's saying, well, Chris, I'm not sure I want to leave my house on the market. Uh, it's just, I'm not feeling it. What, what is your dialogue with that? My dialogue is everyone is at home right now and they have nothing to do except look online and look at real estate. And, you know, Malibu is the perfect place for people right now. We, like I said, we got whacked by the fires, but we're having such a rush on leases right now 
and starting to be sales, I've done a lot of deals in this market. Um, a lot is attitude, but it's also believing in the market and being in Malibu. You're close enough to one of the most you know, populated metropolitan cities in the world, mm-hmm. yet you could be out in nature. I mean, I see Peter uh, walking on Point Doom while I'm walking my little baby. And, um, and it's a great place to be, but people from San Francisco, we're having a huge rush from San Francisco, New York, and also Los Angeles, and a few people from England, and Aspen, actually. A lot of people are escaping Aspen and coming here. So um, keep, I would say keep all your properties on the market because there's so many eyeballs on all our listings right now. All right. So thank you. Now let's go to Peter. Peter, uh, what, are you, what are you saying to your agents? Hey, guys, these are the actionable steps that you need to be taking right now to be ready for after this. Oh, it, it's, it's really great to have perspective. And Can you up your volume a little bit? <laughs> there you Can you hear me now? There you go. All right. Uh, it's great to have perspective. Um, first of all, from Douglas Elliman, um, we were open in 1911. We actually went through the Great Plague. We went through the Great Depression. We've been through a couple of wars. So, you know, we're very experienced in, in navigating through these times. For me personally, um, I, my first uh, uh, depression or recession was during the gas shortage. When we couldn't put gas in our cars. It was in the 70s. And I was a young licensed realtor trying to, you know, survive. And I couldn't put uh, money in my Volkswagen bug, and I was pretty bummed. Gas in my bug. So, you know, having that perspective and- You have I'm your surfboard in the back? Yeah, I know. Everybody <laughs> is this. Cool leave. Hey, Peter every, was cool leave back then. Listen to this, guys. Every single event, whether it was the plague, the depression, the gas shortage, the Millican bond crisis, the Great Recession, whatever we've been through, they have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And they all end. So it's great to have that perspective. So, you know, I want to start this off before I tell you guys exactly what to do is um, you got to know where you are in this process. You know, this is like, I think it was Mauricio said it. I mean, this is brand new. I mean, even though we've been through all these things, nobody's, you know, this is like new to us and nobody knows. I mean, we're six weeks in now. And I think some of us thought maybe it was going to be like a one week, two week event and we'd be back at the beach, you know, And, and, and that's not what's happening, right? And so, you know, we have to all like, kind of hunker down a little bit and get some real, real clarity about this, where we are in the five, you know, you, you've heard of the five steps of grief. Are you in, I wrote them down here. Are you in denial right now that it's happening? Are you angry, you know, and not willing to accept it? Are you bargaining for something different? Like, I guess it's going to be different. You know, are you in depression, which is actually a good thing. Cause if you're in depression right now, that means you're bottoming and you're going to go into acceptance which is where we actually start dealing with where we are and what we do. I mean, this could be, this could be over in, by June 15th and it may not, right? We don't know. So here's what I think, and you guys have all touched on this. You know, number one is role play. Practice your, your, your scripts and dialogue so that when you're talking to people and they ask you things, you're prepared. You know, you're not caught like a deer in the headlights. You know, being skilled in what you're gonna say knowing your client's personality type, knowing all these things is extremely important. And like, and like Paul said so well, don't lead with real estate. You don't have to. Everybody knows you're a realtor, trust me. And they all know that you want to sell and buy real estate. So basically come at them and just say, hey, Paul, how are you? I mean, I'd be straight on. I'd go, how are you dealing with the virus, man? Are you hating it? Are you hunkered down? What's happening? How are your family doing? And start the conversation that way. Number two is, you got to really know the stats. Like we just got our stats and uh, you know, um, at Douglas Elliman, believe it or not, you know, we're, we're doing much better than we thought. You know what I mean? I was kind of blown away. And then our zoom call today, um, agents were talking about all the deals they were opening. So in the last week, it seems like it's picked up a bit. Uh, what I'm seeing is multiples. I'm seeing offers. I'm seeing withdrawals. I'm seeing cancellations. I'm seeing extensions. I'm seeing renegotiations. My point being is it's different for everybody. And we have to have a super open mind right now in terms of perspective, because whatever your mindset is, it may not be the mindset of the person you're talking to. There are people that want to transact real estate right now. They want to do it. They're sitting on their property. Maybe they're having a baby. I talked to two people today that are having babies. Maybe they're going through a divorce. You know what I mean? So things are happening. And then the other thing is, is know the market. You know, you have to really know it right now. And that goes back to, you know, why it's so important to have 
colleagues, where I could call up Mauricio, I can call up Paul, I can call up Chris, and I can say, what do you guys know off market? I could tell you one thing, and I'll go give Chris a shout out right now, is Chris is the kind of guy that if you, you, you work on a deal with him and it doesn't happen, and five years later the client calls him, he's going to bring you back in. He won't forget that you brought him the deal. And that is the kind of relationships you want to build. You don't want to say, oh, legally, I don't have to do it you know, or get into the whole moral greatness of it. You do it anyways because it's the right thing to do. You, you know, you Peter, right. uh, sorry to interrupt. I love the perspective you bring because I'm thinking and I'm looking at the comments and I'm looking how many people we have on the call. Many of us on the call started when things were great Correct. and don't have a perspective of needing to get gritty and needing to understand that things fall through, things don't happen because it has been good for so long. And so bringing that perspective to this group is important, I think, for, for agents to hear who, are, who, lost, who lost a client over this, who had three listings, you know, um, kind of yank while this started happening. So I have a question for all of you. And Chris, and Chris you touched on this. Chris, uh, Eric, what? I have a question for you. Because Mauricio might have to step out in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Shoot him the question. I'm okay still. I'm okay still. Oh, you're okay? Gotten, All right, good. Not, I've not gotten, I'm waiting for a text message to see if I have to go, uh, if I have to get out of here or if it was moved. So, so far it hasn't happened. All right, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and, and pretty simple question. Chris touched on this because he actually gave an example. Let's, let's talk to the agents about, you have clients right now. You have a client who yanked a listing and maybe it's, you know, what would you say to a client who, who's indecisive right now for the listing side and the buy side to get them back in the game. Any good dialogue? We're talking role play. So I thought it was good. We could talk about specific dialogue. I like the S and P comment. What else do you guys have? Mauricio. I mean, I have, uh, you know, you, you uh, Peter said it, Chris has said it. I think we've all said it. You have to have knowledge in the market. I mean, that's the bottom line. When you have okay. tremendous knowledge of your marketplace, whatever your marketplace is, you can pretty much talk about anything. I think you have to be prepared to have a conversation about anything and be intelligent. Um, you know, I, I, I don't love to watch the news just because it's so negative that it puts my mindset in such a bad space that mm -hmm. uh, I really, uh, I, I try just to, take out tidbits, read, you know, a little bit. I stay on top of the stock market. I certainly stay on top of a whole bunch of other, you know, news that's going on, but I, I hate to watch the news. The mindset is just so depressing and negative and, and all of that stuff. But, uh, you know, I think speaking to clients about uh, their family, um, their occupation, uh, their relationships, their, their, you know, just anything that is a little bit more caring and more personal, I actually think creates more of a personal touch than versus being, um, you know, more, um, uh, I don't know, just, you know, about real estate or the stock yeah. market or whatever. I mean, so you're going are, for the emotional side, not the logistical I, I prefer side. to touch somebody on the emotional yeah. side. I mean, that's my All personal. Right. And also, uh, one of the things, because I was looking at the chat box and people were asking specific questions. I was giving kind of specific stuff. So, so I think it's a good segue for me. Um, you know, like, oh, what about the second home market? Or do, you know, clients are asking me, is this going to become a buyer's market? What are, you know, what, how do we answer yeah. those questions? And I would say this, before you answer any of these questions with stats or facts or whatever, I would first go to why do they want to know that? What, what, what are the particulars? what are the particulars uh, that drive you to ask that question? So is it an academic question, you know, or there it's, there's some real need behind it. And I will tell you just Love using that. the example that I used before when 2008, when I bought the house in Santa Monica, you know, at the top of the market and then it fell precipitously and I'm nervous. And I asked the top realtor in my neighborhood. And the first thing he said to me was instead of giving me stats and facts, he said, well, aren't you going to stay in the house? Right. And I'm like, oh, this house is really for you, isn't it? It's for you and your family. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. OK, well, you're not a seller for a number of years, so you should be fine. I'm like, oh, you know, hey, I knew that answer to that before he asked me. I feel dumb about asking it until a week later when I got nervous again. And then I would ask him again and get the same answer. Uh, but that's to, that, the, the answer to any question at all. We don't have to know all the stats. We do not have to be an expert at everything. The answer to every question is, you know, how does that affect you? Or, or why, you know, why, why does that interest you? Are you thinking about buying a home in a second market? Do you know somebody that wants to sell? You know, and, and you're now getting more information and you're also building the relationship instead of just hitting them with stats. 
I well, think you I'm really sorry. have to understand your buyer. Sorry, Chris, I'll be super fast. You really have to understand your buyer and your seller and your audience. You have to understand exactly who you're talking to, right? And a lot of sellers right now are, are spec, speculator, speculators that develop property and they perhaps bought at the wrong time. They're perhaps uh, at the height. Perhaps their, 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 their investment is at, uh, has already maximized. Uh, and one of the things that you have to understand that sellers or buyers have to understand is that perhaps selling even at a loss is actually a win because now you can take the cash that you currently have in an asset that's not going to go up too much, put it into a new asset that is going to have appreciation. And in the long run, you're going to end up winning. So you have to know your audience. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. No, I just think in this market, you just got to be a chameleon. You got to change colors constantly and always evolve. And this is the market that you need to be a specialist instead of a generalist. You have to know your market. By knowing the market, you have confidence. So for any new agents, really take this time, study the inventory, go back three years, know all the comps, know everything about the market. When someone comes to Malibu, Peter and I know it inside and out. There's not one hiking trail, you know, the school systems, everything. You have to know your market. And by having confidence, you will you know, rise to the top. Um, and I feel very important. I feel very strongly about that. Another thing is I was doing a deal with a commercial uh, buyer and he was buying his beach, uh, beach home for his family. And he was so into the numbers and you know, concerned about the numbers going down and is he making the right investment? And I go, I had another client, he waited 13 years to buy a home and paid the same price 13 years later. All those children are grown up and left uh, the house. They're all, all over America right now in different states. And people could look at investment, but you have to look at the value of time and experiences. And I think a lot of people, you have to guide them correctly on that and make sure that they're you know, buying a home in Malibu for experiences and happy memories. It's no, really it, it goes back to Paul's correctly. question of why. Yeah, I, I was gonna. I was just gonna um, say to you, Eric, that I wouldn't like spend too much time trying to convince people that don't want to transact right now to transact. I mean, I point. think it's a waste of time. I think I think there's yep. people that are just like convinced now is not a good time. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of people out there that want to transact right now, and those are the people you need to be open to so and aware of. And, I, and, and I'll say one more thing. This 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 has taught us something that our house is not just its intrinsic financial value anymore. You know, it has become way more valuable as we live in them and, and are, you know, mm -hmm. quarantined in them. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at our homes for the functional value. Yep. What is the functional value of our home? So in my mind, I think the home's value has gone up tremendously um, during these last three That's weeks, really point. way more than ever before. But I would, I would, I would totally, rather than trying to, you know, you know when, you, when you're dealing with a negative person, you're just going to walk away feeling negative. It's not worth right. it. I would just say, hey, I agree with you. You know, enjoy good, it. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's a really good point. But also when you look at how expensive it is to replace the homes, uh, especially with all the permitting process, especially in Malibu, mm -hmm. you can't replace these homes for what they're asking for. There's fantastic buys out there. And you, you look and it could take, you know, three, four years to get permits and two years to build. There's great opportunities, like fantastic buys in this marketplace. I think all over, Maurizio, I think you would attest to that in Beverly Hills with some of the deals that are going down now. It's everywhere. I agree with you 100%. I mean, whether it's Beverly Hills or whether it's uh, Alamo or whether it's uh, Victoria Island, I mean, you know, wherever. It's just, it's everywhere. Yeah. If you're, uh, guys, there's a couple of questions here just to the general audience, uh, to all of us to hear. Where do we get... Uh, that's my alarm. Where do we get, <laughs> where do we get uh, phone numbers for people to call? And my first response is pick up your phone. Everybody's on your phone, your sphere, people you know that you haven't touched forever, right? Just pick up your phone. People overcomplicate everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, I need a CRM. Well, yeah, you do, but you, know, you also have a phone, right? I mean, what do you guys recommend, sure. right? Yeah. If your phone is your CRM at the end of the day, you don't need the CRM. The CRM, you know, keeps you in line. You don't need a CRM. You need a phone and you need to get over your fear. I can tell you that the reason most people don't make calls is because they're fear. Uh, they're scared of rejection. They're scared that uh, somebody's going to hang up the phone on them. Then they're scared of what to say. It's a hundred percent fear based. So if you can just get over your fear and get moving, um, you're going to do really good. And also, do, you, do your lead calls first and then get them over with 
uh, in the beginning of the day. Do what first? The what, Chris? Get possible. your worst calls over with at the beginning yeah. of the day so it just doesn't <laughs> kind of. There's, there's, there's a book called oh. Eat the Frog. Eat yeah. that frog. Talk to you about everybody, it. Everybody, everybody says, I don't day. want to call the person I haven't spoken to in 15 years. Like, what do you say? How are your kids? I mean, it's sort of awkward, right? But I think now we have an opportunity more than ever to call that person because we can say, hey, this virus has really made me think about you. And, you know, I'm sorry I haven't called in 15 years. You know, how are you dealing with it? <laughs> and now you have a perfect entry. That's not awkward at all. Yeah. But if I call you up and go, Eric, man, how are the kids? I mean, that's strange. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> if you're uh, also, if you're, if you're really, because I was, again, <clears throat> watching the chat box, and if you're really a newer agent and you're wondering, you know, okay, the person that says, where do I get the numbers from? They're thinking that the numbers aren't in their phone. And let's just say for a moment that you're not an established agent in, in your particular area. Go out and find out things real estate related or not real estate related. Uh, you know, you're perfectly safe driving around in your car. And if I drive around Santa Monica and I say, hey, there's a line out the door at these three pharmacies, but this one is, is uh, open or the grocery store or wherever, where I'm having a, a hard time or an easy time doing activities of daily living. I'm now becoming a neighborhood resource. If you're really putting value out there, you'll get traffic on your Facebook and Instagram, and then you can use those names to then start contact, contacting them individually. Hey, how can I assist? What can I do? So that's a, that's a good uh, wedge into it for the folks, just to answer directly uh, what, the, what somebody was asking. By the that. way, guys, be in touch. You know, the, um, David Parnes from uh, Million Dollar Listing, I'm sure you guys all know him. And, uh, you know, he's a great guy. And I have to uh, give him kudos. He, uh, we have, uh, he has a listing. And the, um, the, the house man, the people that take care of the house, uh, the, 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 the housekeeper or the staff is, you know, relatively old. She had cancer at one point, so they're not leaving. And one of the things that he's doing for that client, and it's a high end client, but one of the things that he's doing for that client is he's been delivering groceries to the staff. It's a second home. The owners live elsewhere. He's been delivering groceries to the staff on a weekly basis. Um, I mean, if that doesn't get you, uh, uh, <laughs> points or, 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 or credibility with your seller, I don't know what does, right? So there's an opportunity to do, you know, if you think of things, there's an opportunity to do some really cool, different, you know, extraordinary things. The, uh, these are strange times. My, my chiropractor who comes to my house to help me, uh, I talked to him last night. He's like, oh, I threw, my, I threw my back out lifting stones at his house. And I sent him last night uh, a care package by Uber to Topanga Canyon. I didn't get out of my house. I didn't drive over there. And no, you know, nobody's doing that. That's the sort of thing. I didn't do it for a real estate sale. I did it because it's a guy that helps me all the time. These are, there, there are opportunities to, you know, I can promise you none of his patients are doing that. So be the realtor that's doing that sort of thing. And in these, when you have a mindset and openness to doing this sort of thing, the, you don't have to ask, how do I do it? How do I figure it out? Look for it and it's right in front of your face. I love that. Guys, all right, we've got six minutes. We're going to go wrap it around and we'll end it really quick. It is being recorded. We're going to upload it to our YouTube page. I'm going to put the link there. And right now, I just put it in the chat box. And I know awesome. Eric is going to email everybody. That's our whole database is together. We've got over 500,000. Mm -hmm. We're going to put everybody's Instagram there, YouTube, where they Absolutely. work. If you want to know more about each of these companies, that's where we're going to put it. Now, Absolutely. Here you go, guys. We're going to ask one last question to each of you really fast. All right. Chris, what tool are you using right now that's making a difference in your business? Picking up the phone and calling my clients. Dude, I love that. It goes back to the phone. <laughs> it goes back to the phone, but I'm kind of like Maurizio. I'm very touchy-feely. I, I want to be, well, I can't see him face to face. I'm picking up the phone and I'm talking. And I am busier now than I have ever been. I am, I'm working triple time and um, it's paying off. I love that. Okay. Mauricio, question for you. How are you keeping your mindset super high right now? Uh, meditation, constant reminders, uh, I'm working out a lot, keeping myself super busy. I now know how to Mop floors, wash cars, <laughs> clean uh, everything. I mean, uh, I can't yeah, keep cooking feel, bottle washers. I just need to be busy. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right, Paul, question for you. 
what book are you reading right now that you recommend for everybody or a book that you think everyone should be reading right now? Well, I think that, uh, I mean, it's a shameless, shameless plug for me to say wealth can't wait. Right. So uh, <laughs> that's your book. Uh, and the other thing is you, you, you picked like the worst question for me ever, or despite being uh, an author and have lots of books behind me, I have such ADHD that, that I don't, I don't read a ton, but <clears throat> I get a lot of, I get a lot of energy from talking to people, uh, from getting information from people who really know their stuff. Um, I, I, you know, maybe the opposite example, I looked at a Business Insider article that said uh, LA's unemployment just hit 50% and I about like almost fell over. Uh, and then you read the fine print and it's total clickbait, you know, it's, it is, is absolutely not true the way that it's stated so i'm staying like mauricio said even though i'm really on top of stats and and news i'm staying away from the news sources that just want to that just want to glue eyeballs to them get active uh get your news sources become a resource for everybody that that lifts that lifts you up right by being helpful to others uh it's it's really it's really helpful to myself so that's the that's the strategy. The, the panel has been phenomenal, by the way, and I took lots of notes. And Dude, me too. I took, so, we, as someone wrote down, they took five pages of notes. Great, great. <laughs> thank you guys for everything. Paul, really I put your book, Wealth Can't Wait, in there. Just uh, that was the book. Peter, question for you, buddy. All right. What would you recommend people listen to right now or watch that you think has been impactful for you? Oh my Dude, gosh. and the Tiger King or whatever that's called, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching Killing Eve right now. Um, nah, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, a great, great, great movie, but not for, not for, you know, getting optimistic. Um, I do. Huh. Well, I'm more of a, a, a reader. All right, dude. I should have asked Paul the, what are you watching? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, Peter, I'm tell us what reader, book you're reading. I'm a video guy, um, because I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time watching videos. I don't know what, what it is. Book, what book do you recommend, Peter? I just Peter? finished that one. It was a gift from one of my agents. It's a short little book about the Admiral. Is it Admiral Raven? Is that who it is? The Admiral, the guy that wrote about Make Your Bed? Oh, the Make Your Bed guy. Let me see. This, this was like amazing. And it's so right for the times. I mean, a guy that's so accomplished could distill something down so simply blew my mind. It's a short little read. I highly recommend it. It's a great, great book. Um, I'll go, I'll go, I'll send it to you later, Tristan, what it is. Make, make your bed. I just put the link on the chat box. Did you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fabulous book. And, um, you know, I think, I think we all have this opportunity right now. First of all, Tristan, thank you for this opportunity. This was amazing. And to be, Eric, with, it was Eric and me, dude. We I both. Mean, and Eric, thank you. I mean, to be with these guys, I, I love these guys. These guys are like such leaders. And, um, I just think that we really have to be leaders. I think we talked about that a little bit. You know, we, mm -hmm. I want everybody on this call and everybody that listens to this to think of themselves as a leader. Be a sheepdog, not a sheep. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and be the person of hope. Be the light. I think Paul said that. Right. Be a person of light, especially right now. Uh, people are looking to us. They want to be inspired by us. I mean, that's why people buy real estate from us is because they look up to us. They, they, want, they want what we have. And you have to give them something they want. So be positive, be a leader. And I, and I think that we can fly through this thing. I mean, like I said, everything has a beginning, a middle and an end, everything. And uh, we're somewhere, I think, awesome. I think we're starting to peak. I think we're somewhere in the middle. So yeah, it's like somewhere in there. I hope you're yeah. right, Peter. I <laughs> hope I'm right too, Mauricio. <laughs> we all hope you're but right. If I'm dude. not, it doesn't matter because we'll make it through anyway. Right. Oh, we're, we're, we're all resilient. We'll, well Mauricio's learning new skills to take care of his house, right? Remember, remember, you guys remember when we launched TELUS and then like six months, I, I don't know if everybody knows this, I was the founder of TELUS Properties. And when we launched it, within six months, we were in the Great Recession. <laughs> everybody was asking me, what are you doing? We opened our company right then too. But hey, we that, made that too, right? No, we, we, can't, we can't time... Uh, we can't time exactly when this thing is going to be over, when we'll return to normal, but we certainly can uh, have a great hand in, in where we're going to be in it. So we can, we can come out of this. You can either come out of this stronger than ever before, which I believe will be the minority for sure, mm -hmm. but, it, but, but we're 100% in control of whether we're part of that minority that comes out the other side even stronger. Of Guys, I can't thank this panel enough. It's the first time I've met you guys, so thank you. I hope I get to meet you guys when, I'm, when we can travel again and I come out to California. 
and uh, in person. It was great. Tristan, thanks for setting this up. For breakthrough brokers out there, join Lab Coat Agents. If you haven't joined Lab Coat Agents, we'll put the link to the Facebook group in the Breakthrough Broker email. And then Lab Coat Agents people, join Breakthrough Broker uh, if you haven't joined. So guys, let's all take these two communities together. Thank you to all of you. Tristan, thank you. Anything to close out with? No, guys, all, all of us here are our leaders of our industry and people do look up to all of you and all of us. So one thing that's super clear is that we've all been leading already in uncertainty because we've been pushing boundaries and setting new standards. So it's new to us. I'm uh, sorry, it's not new to us. It's habits that we've created. So I think all the people that are going through this, they're not, they're not used to living in uncertainty and they're looking to, to, to you, right? And I'm thankful that you guys are here helping us lead the way. So thank you guys. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Everyone stay Bye. healthy and stay Bye. safe. Thanks, Tristan. Bye, guys. Thank you guys. Bye. Great to me. See you, Chris, Paul, and Mauricio. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Thank you.